So today we're gonna to talk about the psychology of a motivated seller and how you can use that to your advantage. This is Todd Toback, and if you have not been to our website, I've got a gift for you. You gotta to go to nextlevelwholesaling.com. If you've ever wanted to do big wholesale deals, if you wanted your business to operate without you on a day-to-day -day basis and have it be profitable and feed you month after month after month, you gotta download the Next Level Wholesaling Assessment. It's totally free, and I actually created this as a tool for myself. I've done over 1,400 deals, and I am involved in my wholesale business just a few hours a week, possibly less. And I got to tell you, this tool is what helped me get there. If you want to make more money in your wholesale business, if you want to start to take yourself out of the day-to-day -day operations, if you want something that's going to be wildly profitable, go to nextlevelwholesaling.com, take the assessment. It's going to rate you in the major areas of your wholesale business. It's going to spit out a score, and now it's going to be abundantly clear on that next step that you need to take to, pay, to put more money in your pocket and get your time back. All right, so let's jump into the psychology of a motivated seller because if you're listening to this, hopefully you want to do big, fat, juicy, profitable wholesale deals. Ah, music to my ears. If it's music to your ears, you and I are going to be very, very good friends. Or if we're not, we will be soon. <laughs> so the psychology of a motivated seller, really that's what this is all about, right? Someone's got a problem and a piece of real estate. And when you can marry those uh, things together with a knowledge of sales and negotiation and the information on this podcast, you will be unstoppable. The information that I'm going to talk about today really changed my business. And I got to tell you that many people, I'll start this off, have a barrier in their mind, right? They think that they are only worthy of a ten dollars or a $20,000 wholesale deal because why in the world would a seller sell you a house for a price that would enable you to make 50, 60, 70, even $100,000 on a deal? Why would they do that, right? Well, logic tells you that they wouldn't. Your friends who are not successful will tell you that they don't do that. The majority of wholesalers will tell you that it can't be done. And why is that? Because they are comfortable. They have a belief system. They are looking at things the wrong way. They're not asking the universe for this. And so the barrier to the big deal, the biggest barrier is your psychology about the seller's psychology. It's all about what you believe the seller believes, right? Why is the seller going to sell to you at a price in which you can make a big, fat, juicy profit? Well, I can tell you the answer to this, and you've probably heard about this. Sales is all based on emotion, not logic. And what I mean by that is people buy on emotion, right? And if you're buying a car, you're buying a house. Uh, but in this case, if people are selling a house, they're also selling on emotion, especially if you're selling to you. Now, there are some people out there who uh, are extremely sophisticated. They're going to take their house. They're going to fix it up. They're going to list it with a real estate agent. They're going to sell it for top dollar. Hey, and I wish those people the best of luck. But the population that de we deal with, they have a problem. And it is because of their belief system, how they've treated the house or treated the problem or dealt with the tenants, that now they have a psychology to sell you a property at below market value. Let me tell you a story. I think I've told this uh, on this podcast before, but my wife was recently in Zambia, the country in Africa, and I was home with my kids. And long story short, my wife was like, uh, our dishwasher broke like the day she left. And she was super uh, annoyed. And she's like, I want this fixed by the time I, I get back. And of course, I'm with my kids and I'm doing the dishes like, you know, with my four kids and she's gone. And I'm like, oh, this is so much work. And on top of that, I was really tired of doing the dishes. And she texts me. She's like, hey, I'm leaving. We're using the app WhatsApp. She's like, I'm leaving Zambia. The dishwasher is fixed, right? <laughs> so all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, and the kids are like, Todd, you know, you better have a new dishwasher when mom gets home. <laughs> and now meanwhile, I've been barely keeping my head above water washing my four kids. But I'm like, all right. So all of a sudden I call the first dish. By the way, the, I call the fish, first dishwasher repair person doesn't answer the phone. I call the second dishwasher repair person does, doesn't answer the phone. I call the third dishwasher uh, person. He answers the phone. He actually fixes our old 
dishwasher, right? And this actually, this was the, there was a, a gap here in the story. And then in between then and the time that my wife came home, the repair broke. I called the guy to fix the broken dishwasher, okay? And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to buy a new dishwasher. I went online and I found the only dishwasher that could be in my house within 24 hours. And it was extremely expensive. I paid three times more than I should have for the dishwasher. <laughs> so where am I going with that? Well, I made a decision based on emotion, not logic, right? I spent three times as much on a dishwasher getting it in today because I was just so fed up. I didn't have time to shop around. I didn't want to shop around. My wife was coming home. I was tired of doing dishes. And this procrastination, right, this procrastination eventually got to a boiling point where I did not care. I wanted to get rid of this problem so fast that I just went online and got the dishwasher that was going to be in my house in 24 hours, okay? And that was actually the same day. By the way, pretty decent dishwasher. <laughs> so long story short, how can we use this to our advantage? Well, prospects, okay, just like in this scenario, go hot and cold, right? Meaning that they procrastinate, they kick their, their problems down the road where the problem is bothering them. Maybe they have a bad tenant in the property who's not paying rent. Maybe a relative is living in the property rent-free, my favorite. Maybe they're out of town, the property is vacant. Maybe uh, they inherited the property and need cash now. And so they go through these phases of emotions where they like, I gotta sell the property, right? And then all of a sudden they cool off and they procrastinate and kick the can down the road. And each time that problem comes back in their life, the heat gets a little hotter, right? The problem becomes a little bit bigger until eventually it gets to a boiling point where it's just, just too much to bear in that moment. They wanna get rid of this problem at the moment where money, logic, is not a factor. Now, here's the cool thing. If you've been in this business for any length of time, you will see that sellers seem like they're hot and they disappear and they ghost you, right? They ghost you, they stop calling you, they stop answering your text messages. Maybe they've changed their mind. They're like, eh, maybe I'll list with a realtor. And that's okay because they are doing this to other people too. So your job as a professional wholesaler, real estate investor, salesperson, and by the way, if you are not a professional, you gotta buy a copy of the No Limit Selling System. It is by far the best system on talking to sellers, acquiring big real estate deals, compressing the timeline so you can get paid faster and more often. And also, if you wanna make this business fun, you gotta buy it, go to nolimitsalesystem.com. The price is embarrassingly low. Um, if you're totally broke and have no money, you could probably piece together all the information on this podcast uh, about it, but just go to nolimitsalesystem.com. All right, so when a seller ghosts you, that means that they're going hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. This is when the sales system comes in. You gotta use their psychology. Once you get a seller back on the phone after they go cold and you're talking to them, it is your job to keep them hot. You wanna keep the fish on the line. So you wanna use commitments to set the next step so that they deal with you and only with you. So for me, I think I've told the story about a, uh, a woman who we're trying to buy her house for two years. She was going hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. And then finally we get her on the phone. I'm like, what is going on, right? I'm like, we've been talking for two years and nothing has happened. You know, like, what is it? And so I eventually, uh, my whole team was sitting around me and I said, listen, you know, what has to happen? She goes, well, I've got to talk to my son. Maybe he wants to buy it. I said, okay, is it okay to give him a deadline to buy? She says, yes. I go, what is it? She goes, 90 days. I said, all right. I said, so if he buys, if he doesn't buy by the deadline, what do you want to do then? I'll do business with you. Great. By the way, one more question. When are you going to talk to your son? By the end of the week. Okay, so we're in agreement that you're going to talk to your son by the end of the week. You're going to give him a deadline for 90 days. If he buys, great. Congratulations. If he doesn't, do you want to sell to me? Yes. Great. Why don't we talk at the end of the week? And so you hold those commitments. Long story short, you push them towards that next step while they are hot. Because she called her son. Son said, I don't want the property. Still hot. She called me and says, let's do the deal. I was in the house the next day. We locked up the contract. $80,000 in my pocket. And I want that in your pocket 
if you're listening to this. And so you have to understand, number one, you deserve a big, fat, juicy wholesale deal. The seller deserves your help. And they don't care that you're making a profit because they want to get rid of this pain so, 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 so bad, right? Take it away. Get paid. But don't shortchange yourself. Remember, people sell to you on emotion, not logic. We provide a solution to their problem. We take away the pain and there's value in that. Okay, remember the secret to doing big deals? You got to remove that barrier. You got to fix your psychology before you meet with a seller. Understand it's okay to make a big, fat, juicy profit. People buy on emotion or sell on emotion, not logic. Okay, remember that story about my dishwasher, right? <laughs> Be the person that's there when somebody wants their problem gone now. Remember, sellers go hot and cold, but each time they come back hotter. They may ghost you, but just know if they come back at that point, that's when you want to use commitments. Be bold, set appointments, keep the line tight, ask for a great price, and always have that next step defined. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to buy the No Limit Selling System, by the way. Um, it's like a prerequisite to doing big, fat, juicy deals. Don't forget to go to nextlevelwholesaling.com. Take the assessment. Let me know your score, and I will talk to you on the next episode.